All right, so in this video, I am going to go over some different ways to mount your photographs. In particular, um, black and white darkroom photographs like this fiber-based print. However, these would be applicable to other forms of art in some cases as well. So the first method we're gonna go over and I'm gonna dry mount this. This is a fiber-based black and white print I did in my darkroom and I'm gonna dry mount, trim it down, and show you um, how I go about that. So for dry mounting, you need a few more pieces of equipment, which makes it a little bit more expensive. Um, however, I do find the benefits worthwhile. Um, the first thing you will need is a dry mount press, um, such as this. Now, they can be quite expensive brand new, but you can find them a bit cheaper on the used market. You'll also need um, like a tacking iron. This is a Sealector tacking iron uh, made by Seal Incorporated. And anyway, let's just, and, and some dry mount tissue. But I'll just kind of walk you through, like I said, exactly how I do this. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm warming up my dry mount press and the dry mount tissue I'm using is, crap all of me. The dry mount tissue I'm using is buffer mount. And for this, I have my press set at right around 180 degrees. And the first thing we want to do is pre-warm or dry out the print and the mounting board. And I'm going to mount this to the same exact uh, board that I cut the over mat for. So this is the rising museum mount um, warm white. And this is Ilford warm tone paper, if you're wondering. So I find the warm white and the warm tone paper look really good together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure there's no dust or um, you don't want any dirt, dust, or um, anything to be on top of the print or kind of between the mat and the print. And if you just kind of rub your hand on it, you can kind of feel, um, if there is anything, particularly without a glove and a ring. Carefully grab that. So we just kind of wipe. And because I'm in a dingy um, basement with an unfinished ceiling, I um, am a bit particular. So I also use like this brush to just kind of make sure that uh, nothing is on there. Because if you press that down into the emulsion, that is going to make you unhappy. Then in the press, I just have two um, sheets of dry mount, uh, the same rising buffer mount board. Uh, make sure those are clean as well. So I'm just gonna take and pop this in here. And that's just drying out the mat board and the print. I have dry mounted without doing this, and honestly, I haven't noticed any difference, but it is recommended by a buffer mount in their directions to do it, so I started doing it. So, so after about 45 seconds or so, um, you can pull these out of the press. Hopefully together. And then I will flip this, the print over. And next you want to cut the actual buffer mount. And what this is, it's, a, it's called a dry mount tissue. And I, I've used different kinds and the buffer mount that I'm using now is uh, reversible. So you're, you're permanently bonding, or in this case you're not permanently, but you're bonding the board down to the mat board and making it nice and flat. Um, but with that causes some issues of archivalness. Um, but with this stuff, you could potentially reverse it. I have never done it. I've heard it's a pain in the butt, but you can do it. So we're gonna cut the, uh, the, the tissue. Put this to the side. Let me take my rings off. Mm -hmm. So for this, you could use, um, I could use my trimmer, but I tend to just find it's easier to cut it down. Let's put this in. Cut it down with the scissors. And the one thing I do like to do is have 
start with a square edge. So that's where it would be advantage, advantageous, advantageous, yeah, advantageous to use something like a trimmer to do this. However, I just, and you don't want to get it too wrinkly or anything. And so basically you're going to trim this down a little bit bigger than what your print is. But I like to keep a square edge here and a square edge here to line it up on the back. So for here, I'm not like too particular. Like I said, I could be neater and, and use a my actual trimmer, but I just cut it with the scissors. And by the way, if your print's like super hot coming out the dry mount press, just be careful putting it on this because this stuff is an adhesive. So I'm just gonna roll this up. And if you're not um, as concerned about the reversal, I have used uh, Arista makes a really uh, decent dry mount tissue and it actually comes in sheets. So it's a little bit easier to work with than the rolls on a side note. So next we're gonna put this onto the back. And again, we're trying to keep all of the you don't want any dirt or anything to come in between this because that's going to put little dimples in your print and you don't want that. However, like I said, I'm working in an unfinished basement and with a fruit fly or something. And it has not, you know, as long as, long as you're careful, it's not going to be a huge issue. Now, the main part on here is you want to make sure you're covering the part, the, the picture portion. I'm not as concerned about the, um, the white borders because I'm trimming those off. However, I do want the edge of the print for at least two sides because that's going to allow me to trim it nice and square in my printer. Now we take the tacking iron and this is what's called release paper. So you can kind of think of this as it's not, but you can kind of think of this as waxed paper as the mounting tissue will not stick to this. And this stuff was by uh, Ben Ben Fag, but it's called Bean, Bean Fang. I don't know how to pronounce it. B E I N, let me see. B I E N F A N G release paper, silicone coated, both sides. So, like I said, that will um, prevent the actual print or the tissue from sticking to this. So, we can take our tacking iron, which is also heated up. And I just start with a little circle in the center. That Arista paper that I mentioned seemed to be easier to tack to the back, but this stuff's working okay. And you could also just cut a piece of release paper to cover the whole back, but I've just kind of been doing it this way. And then I just work it out to each one of the corners, just nice and slow, just take your time. You don't want to press too hard. I just kind of lift it up. I'm going to the side. I want to go to the corners. A little bit at a time. And then I will go to this side. The other thing you can do is um, put release paper on top and bottom and just throw this in the dry mount press. But the release paper is super curly and I just find it's, 
it's kind of a pain in the butt and I haven't had too many problems just doing it this way. So this, I mean, this potentially, I guess could take a little bit more time, but I think what you'll find is like, once you, once you do do this, you'll kind of find like working methods for you. Um, you know, you'll, you'll definitely, I'm going to just spit on my release paper. You'll definitely find, um, you'll definitely probably screw some up. So you might want to, you know, kind of uh, start with a test print. Um, I find trimming it seems to be the, the most difficult or the most, I guess I would say the part that I've screwed up the most is trimming it. Like, like just trimming the wrong size or trimming it crooked. And, but I'll show you how I do that anyway. So, okay, once I got all four corners kind of tacked down, um, <clears throat> again, I want to make sure no dust or particles are on there. I did not think talking would, I didn't think I spit that much when I talked. Jeez. Okay. So there we go. Next, going to have to get my trimmer out here. So I'm going to put the mat maybe on top here. Don't have a ton of room to work with, so I'll put this stuff away. And get out my trimmer. And let's see. So this is a doll, a D, I can't pronounce anything. A D-A-H-L-E trimmer. And I think I'm gonna have to do this this way. And I got this one on a deal, and honestly, I would not recommend it. Um, I intend to replace it with a roto trim. Um, I find that those work nicer. I'm not a huge fan of um, sliding this through. I always think I'm going to damage my prints. I don't really like the guide, and it, it puts, if you're not really careful, it puts kind of a, a mark on the edge. So there's a note on that. Now let's grab the actual print. And you pr probably want to make sure that this is clean too. I have it covered, so I don't worry about that too much. And now I'm going to take one of the edges that I know is square and put it on there. And just run it through. So make sure that's nice and square. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the rulers on here either. So I don't know. I'm going to give the rotor trim a try and hopefully I like it better. I find the first edge is the hardest because you don't really have a lot to line up with. And like I said, I don't find the rulers very useful for the most part. But then basically, and with this one, I have to be careful. I can't press down because, like I said, it'll leave little lines. But then you basically just cut across. And what that's doing is cutting the uh, the bond tissue or the dry mount tissue um, even with the print. So then now you have a nice one to work with. So it's a little bit easier to line up where you want to trim the next one. Let's go ahead and give that a trim. And one thing that you'll want to do, which I don't always do and I always kick myself, you might want to give yourself a little bit of a bleed when you're printing. And what I mean by that is if you want the, the width of your print to be 10 inches, maybe print it a little bit bigger, like 10 and a 16th. So if you want your final print to be 10, you want to be able to trim down a little bit on here because if you trim and get some white in it, it makes it problematic to really get it where you want it at that point. So it's called a bleed in the printing world. I don't know what it's called in the photography world. So line that up. Make sure everything's square. It's really important to get these cuts all nice and square. As I didn't. All right, so as I was saying, if you get some white on there, it can be harder to actually um, trim it off. 
doesn't mean you can't, and we will. So real problems, real world, right here. Let me just put it in a little bit further. But now you're gonna have to go a little bit more and just just go with it. And you you can be like a slight bit off, but that's why having a bleed can really help because it'll give you a little bit more um, leeway. Yeah, leeway. So there, that looks nice. Trim another one. And you just go around the edges and do this. You do this, then you do that. And it could have been entirely possible that my the easels on my um, my printing easel could have been like a little bit shifted too. And that is really one of the big benefits of dry mounting as well is that you're gonna get really, really razor sharp edges. So like that. But yeah, I bought this doll and because it does, I think it does up to 24 maybe. And that was one of the reasons I, I bought it and I got a good deal on it. But in hindsight, I rarely print that big. So I might hang on to this one, but I might just get a bigger rotor trim. I don't know. Not 100% sure yet. But like I said, this is has a little bit of a, a learning curve on it. But if you take your time, it's not too bad. And I do find that the the benefits um, of dry mounting, I think it, to me, it looks, uh, I think it looks the best. All right, I think we have success. All right, let me get back on the map. I like to shake out my mat board, like I said, unfinished. Ceiling in the basement is probably not the best place for framing equipment, but it's what I got. So, all right, let me put this away so I have some more space. And hopefully if we pre-plan like in the other video, the first video, and then cut the mat correctly, we should have a half inch border with a dirty mat. Well, I can clean that up. Oh, I guess on a, on a note, I don't know how I got smudge on the mat, but here's another tip. Uh, magic, is it called mat? No, not mad, not magic eraser, not magic eraser. Well, I'll have to go find it in a sec, but it's the, the magic rub erasers work really good for cleaning, um, smudges and stuff like that off your mat. So, all right, next. I want to go ahead and make sure, now we're gonna actually press this. You can see this, I'm getting a terrible glare from that light. So, yeah, I'm matting this with a pretty heavy mat on it, and I actually think I'm going to cut an eight ply mat for this, but I already have a, a four ply cut, so we're gonna see. And what an eight ply mat is, it's just twice the thickness. So when I get into bigger prints, I tend to like to do um, a little bit heavier. I think it looks looks nice. Um, but they're more expensive and you know, but I do like this print. So next I'm just going to make sure there's nothing on the mat again, because this is the part where you're, you're going to, you're going to flatten this down and you definitely don't want any um, dirt grime or anything like that. And just kind of take your hand make sure you don't feel anything. Don't kink the print at this point or you'll kick yourself. We'll put the mat, the dirty mat on it. So square that with everything. So we want that to all line up. And then basically shift this around carefully until it is even all the way around. All right, about there. Now I'm gonna put some, no, I don't need to put any weight on it. I am getting ahead of myself. That's a different way to mount. So now I'm gonna take that release paper again and just tack it down. And I, I just tack it in the center and just hold it there for, I don't know, whatever feels good. 
you just want it to get warm so that it's not, and all this is doing is basically tacking it in place so that when you do put it in the dry mount, it's not gonna like shift around and, which out of all the problems, if it shifted a little, probably wouldn't be, it wouldn't be dire, but it would still, then your mats wouldn't like line up and you'd have to maybe trim it down or something, I don't know. But just do this. But again, you wanna use light pressure. You don't wanna like put any kind of indentation on that at all. So that should be good. Take the mat off carefully. Because if you didn't tack it down enough, you don't want to, you don't want this thing shifting around, I guess is the, the point. And then I just brush it off real good. Like I said, dingy basement. You may or may not have to be as particular as this. And I like to get everything off. I don't like anything getting in that dry mount press because I do flatten my pictures in there and it sucks ruining a print when you're flattening it or, or framing it. So we're gonna put it in the press. And now we're pretty much done. Now, uh, one thing to note about the press, I'm gonna put it in here for the two minutes and I'm just gonna turn the press off because I need this counter space where I normally would um, take it out and just weight it under two other mat boards with books on top of it for it to cool. So you wanna take it out before it cools and then get weight on it immediately. Um, the recommended time for that dry mount tissue is two minutes, but I do do it this way a lot of times because it, it I mean, it does take up the press. So if you need the press, you can't really do that but I'll just unplug it and leave it sit uh, until the press is cool. And that seems to me to probably make the best bond because occasionally when you're cooling it this way, uh, they do make like big weights uh, for dry mount presses. I don't have one, so I have to kind of use books and different things. And I find that sometimes the, the paper or the, the bond can not be as good. So you just want to check the bond when you're done, but that should pretty much take care of that. So another note, you want to use the recommended temperature on the dry mount press. I have wrecked prints by going too hot. So um, just be careful about that too. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Found it. So yeah, the magic rub eraser. So there's a little scuff on here. And now it's basically gone. But you want to be careful with these mats because you can scuff them up really good. But yeah, these are the erasers I've found to work the best for, for something like that. All right, then once the press or it's cooled down under weight, you're going to want to take a look at the mount. And what you want to do is just bend up on the board a little and make sure that the corners don't pull up. If they don't pull up, that means that the mount is good. And in this case, it is staying down nicely. So I think we are done with the dry mount and everything. I don't see any defects. You just kind of want to look, look things over, make sure nothing got messed up. And to me, it looks really, really good. So I'm going to get the mat. And we're gonna put that on top. And what I would do next would be to uh, take a piece of linen tape and hinge this to fall into place. I am not going to do that as I believe I am going to possibly uh, put an eight ply on this one as I think I will like it a little bit better. So that is how you dry mount a fiber base, a trim and dry mount a fiber base print. And I said that gives it a really sharp edge. And when, when you're like me and you inspect things closely, it just, to my eye, looks the best. And it lays the, you know, lays the, the print down perfectly flat. And one thing that bugs me is when I see something in a frame and the print's kind of uh, distorted or, or full, or yeah, you can see the folds and stuff. So that's why I do prefer this. But 
to each his own. Let's get on to the next one. All right, next, what do we have? We are going to do my next favorite, and I typically do this for smaller prints or prints that I am definitely afraid of ruining uh, by doing the dry mounting, uh, particularly like lift prints that I just love that were a pain in the butt and like probably know that I can't remake or it would be very difficult to. So anything that's really, really valuable because the chances of screwing something up, dry mounting it, kind of go up a little bit. So I like to use photo corners. I guess that's the next way, photo corners. Let me see. So I have this lift print here and like I said, it's a smaller print, it's eight by 10. I find that these will stay pretty flat by doing this, but whenever you get up into like 11 by 14 and bigger, uh, dry mounting is definitely gonna keep it flatter and it dry mounting will keep it flatter even for this size. And presentation wise, I find dry mounting still looks a little bit better, but you'll notice that the backing that I'm using is actually a different color. These are both rising mount mats, but I just happen to have more of this white because I don't use it as much. I really like the warm white. And that's not gonna matter because the paper is gonna kind of be the border the, the way I do this. So what's important to me is with the warm white, you can see how, at least I think you can let's move it up a little. You can see how the warm white matches uh, matches the paper more. So it's not gonna be like a huge contrast and it's almost gonna look like it's um, dry mounted in a way. So the edges might not be quite as clean, but anyway. So to do this, we're gonna put this in here. And if it's not um, a really important print, you could also photo corner, um, put photo corners on just acid free uh, backing board. You wouldn't need to use the mat board as well. But since this is a fiber based photo print, I want it to be very archival. So we are going to do that. All right, move that up out of the glare. So now I kind of hold one side of the board. Now, once you have the, the squares, you know, the, the size mounted up and you really, whatever, whatever you can do to get this done is gonna work, but this is how I do it. So I'll line everything up, square it perfectly, the tops, and then I hold one side down and kind of grab underneath and move it around and then I line up two corners. In this particular mat, I only cut a quarter inch around, which I sometimes do, just depends. So. And just a little bit more this way. There you go. Now, now I'm gonna take my glove, like I was gonna do before, but didn't need to, and something heavy. And basically this is, again, trying to make sure that your print is not moving around, but you wanna put something soft underneath it. And then you can lift this up and now it won't go anywhere. And where are the photo corners? So these guys are just photo safe, acid free photo corners. So what I love about doing it this way is it's definitely gonna be the most archival because you can literally, you know, pull up the mat and pull the print out. So you're just gonna put it on there. And with fiber-based prints, you gotta make sure they're pretty flat. Other than that, it's um, pretty self-explanatory on how you're gonna do this one. So, do all four corners. I try not to touch the print with my bare hands as much as I can, but I find having gloves um, and trying to deal with like adhesive things like is, but you generally don't want to be fingering up the prints either. I see a big fingerprint on there. Oh. 
yeah, and this was even a mat that I screwed up. But again, it's not really going to matter because none of the, so there's a small cut in here, but it's not really going to matter because none of the mat is going to be showing up. So once you got the four corners done, put the mat back on and you are good to go. So that is how I would mount it to the backing board. Um, there are a couple ways you can hold this down. One um, way, which I don't really recommend, but you can get acid-free ATG and you can tack it, or you can get, um, there are some different glues that are um, uh, neutral. So this is neutral pH adhesive. So you could put some dots of that, um, or you can just hinge it if you want to. So to hinge it, you would just put this here, get yourself some, all this stuff is kind of made by the same company, all this archival framing stuff, um, linen hinging tape. And you can get the stuff that's self-adhesive or you can get the stuff that you have to lick. I have both, I've just been using the self-adhesive. And then you're just gonna make a basically butt this up. And if you did a good job of lining, let me, it's really hard to do guys. If you did a good job of lining up the print, then when you fold it down, it should, it should work perfectly. So it's going to measure that something like so. Take your old scissors, cut it. And this is a pain in the butt to get the window that's going to just hinge and there and that is how you would do that then when you put it back in and put it in the frame it's going to suck it up in there but so that's one way you could do it and then the next would be like I said you could use this kind of glue so you could tape the bottom once you get in a frame you might not need to but if you want it to look really good I would just take like a few dabs of this around here. And this is pH neutral, um, should be pretty archival. But if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Okay. A few dabs will do you. Ah, don't get it on your fingers. Then, now you're going to want to make sure this is lined up really nice. Like so. Perfect. And then you're going to press down. And you need to get hold weight on this. So what I am going to do is uh, have some picture framing glass. Well, this is a size too big, but it's clean. So I'm just gonna lay that down on there. And let that sit probably um, for a while. And let's see, I don't know if it says how long it takes to glue. I usually just, I le usually leave it overnight but it doesn't even say. It says avoid freezing though. But anyway, I usually leave it with weight on it overnight and then you can still like pry that apart if you need to, but especially for a print you're doing this to, it's going to keep these edges, it's gonna keep everything nice and uh, down even while you don't have it in a frame with any pressure on the glass. So I'm gonna clean my hands and then we will get to the next way. All right, and the last way, there's no glare on that one, because that is a matte paper. That is Moab and Trotta. And uh, I like matte inkjet prints better. I'm gonna try a few more Biarta papers, but for the most part, I think the matte papers have a really nice look to them coming out of the, I have an Epson printer. Um, and for this, I'm actually gonna have to trim this one down to do this. This is a, actually no, I won't. 
Yeah, I will. Yeah, let me trim the top and bottom real quick. Hold tight. And that's just going to make it easier to show you. Uh, the last method I'm going to show you how to do is uh, a hinge mount. And I guess there's a couple different ways to do this. I would typically only do this on something like this. That was, you know, this was a, a reproduction of a, a darker imprint. Um, so this was actually you know, a digital file that was printed um, on a printer. So it's not real hard for me to reproduce this if I'm if I mess something up. Therefore, it's not as rare, it's not as um, collectible per se, but it is still really nice. So we want to, you know, we, we still want to present it nicely. So I'm still using the cotton mat uh, mats, and in this instance, I have a cotton backing, but you wouldn't need to use a cotton backing. Um, so any like uh, just loose prints. And in particular, it works good with RC prints, the, the hinge mount method here, works good with RC prints and anything that's gonna lay flat on its own. Because the thing with fiber-based paper, it curls, so it needs you need to be able to like hold it down. So with this one, we will, we'll just go ahead and do a hinge mount. So there's a couple different ways to do this as well. The easiest is just take a piece of your linen tape Uh, a lot of times you'll take two pieces. So you could just take one piece here. Right, then you put another piece on the other side. And in particular, I would do it this way if you were using say uh, like foam core and I would still use like acid free foam core because that way you're not taping it down to the foam core. Not that it's gonna matter that much. Then just make sure you have clean dry hands when working with the mount and try and get this centered. And you're basically just going to center it and press down once it looks good. And that would hinge it that way. The other way to do it is to do what's called, uh, you make T's with these and then you mount it to the actual packing board. So for that, you're going to um, center this like we did. I don't need that for this. So you're gonna line up the board. And I don't know if there's really any advantage to doing it one way like one of these ways over the other, like just a basic hinge mount like I just showed you. To me, it just seems easier, and I don't mount a lot of stuff this way. Anyway, even for this particular print, I would do the photo corners. It just, I think it's just a better, you're not taping anything directly to the actual picture. So, but I'll show you this way because you can do it this way. And just make sure you're using a good quality, you know, either framing tape. You don't want to use like scotch tape or anything like that. So once you get this mat lined up, like so, you are going to put a weight on it again. Find my weight. Yeah. So put a glove down. And I do find with the, the inkjet matte papers, they are susceptible to like flaking and damage. So you want to be pretty careful with the, I want to call them an emulsion, but it's not. So now you're going to take this and I'm just reusing this. You want to keep it in the same spot and you're going to take it kind of the same thing. Only this time we're, we're going to tape to the, the backing. It's called a, a T hinge, a T mount. T something or other.
All right, then you're just going to take this and tape this down to the backing board. And that will hold it in place, but still give it the ability to um, breathe and move around with humidity and climate change and whatnot. Yeah, I'm going to move this, move that. And there you go. And then you can go ahead and do the same. You could do a hinge, a hinge up here, or you could tack it down. In this case, I would just tack it down. For a print like this, I just use ATG, and I'll just take a couple dabs. And I do, I did find acid-free ATG on Amazon, but I mean, it says acid free, but I don't know if I like 100% trust it. So that's why I usually default if I'm going to, um, to the glue. If I'm just going straight into a frame, I will just hinge mount the top, make sure everything's lined up good, and then put lots of pressure on the back. Occasionally, I'll, and I'll use it like a little bit less um, stuff to keep it together. But anyway, that is how you would do, that is how you would do a hinge mount. And then you can sign right here and sign. On the other one and the other uh, on the dry mount one you're actually signing the mat board but so for this print the border I just try and match up the mat to the border so it's not like a huge disconnect and that would be the only real thing to consider like I said I do prefer um, when I was going through kind of looking at different pictures I've done um, the dry mount ones, and again, I'm pretty particular, but I would look, if I looked really close, I would, I would just, I would like the look of the clean, sharp edge of the dry mount prints the best, but it does take the most equipment, time, uh, learning, and it might not be the most archival depending on the tissue that you use, or if you can even remove the backing it without damaging the print and I guess that's the point like I've never tried but I've heard it's not that difficult and I know you can but again your your chances of possibly ruining the print trying to get the backing off go up so using the photo corners is probably the best in regards to like you could reselenium tone your prints down the road you, you you can change the mount and the backing easier later now, the dry mount I can still I can still respot but it's, you're gonna have a, just much more of a process removing that buffer mount to say reselenium tone or, or do anything like that. So, so those are the different mounting options I'm gonna go over at this time. Those are kind of the ones I feel you know, most important in traditional um, darkroom printing, but clearly there's a lot of different ways you can mount your prints. So I hope you found that useful. In the next video, I will go over um, actually putting these into frames and what that looks like. So please subscribe, uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if I'm forgetting anything and I will try and make sure that I cover it. We'll see you next time.